everyone, this is Jay Wells and welcome back to Jay's Office Hours. I am a USA Today best-selling author of urban fantasy, horror, romance, and all sorts of different genres. Um, and I do these videos because I want to share what I've learned about being a writer um, through uh, writing craft and their life of being a writer, which is kind of an unusual job, um, with other people. And that's why I do it. Um, and today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite tools for um, sort of making sure you're on track with your writing. Uh, and I'm not talking about a word count, count, you know, word count list or, you know, how many sales you've had or how many awards you've won or any of that. I want to talk about getting very real about why you write and what you're trying to get out of it. Um, I... Don't know how many of my videos you've watched, but if you've watched several of them, you know that my focus is not on the business. Um, I learned uh, through a period of pretty extreme burnout that uh, I don't control the business. Um, so I got to get real good at enjoying the work. Because ultimately, if you can't enjoy the work, there is no point to doing it. Um, you don't control how successful you are. I mean, there are some things you can do to, to increase your chances of success, and you should do those. But if those things don't work because they're out of your control, you've got to, at the end of the day, figure out how to get back to the chair and write another story. So my tools that I offer you are really about making sure you can keep doing that. Because if you do it right, writing is a craft that will serve you your entire life. Um, and it will help you survive your life. I really believe that. Um, so the tool that I want to talk about today is an artist statement. Uh, I was a art history major in college and I worked at a, uh, I interned at a gallery and a lot of my friends were artists and still are. And, uh, a really common practice in the art world is when an artist has a show, they'll create an artist statement, which is sort of a, you know, a couple of paragraphs about the influences of the show, um, what themes they're working from to create the series of work, um, what, you know, I don't know, just basically like their goals and what sort of processes they did um, to help people coming to the show sort of understand where they're coming from and what they were trying to do. And so when I, a couple of years ago, when I was sort of at the beginning of this burnout phase, uh, which was, which happened because I was in graduate school. I had some contracts with a big New York house that I was trying to fulfill. You know, I had a family. Um, I was trying to juggle a lot of things. And frankly, I was working harder than I'd ever worked before and getting, um, having less and less success. Uh, not because I was a worse writer, but because the market shifted and it was a big wake up call for me that, oh, wait, I can work really, really hard and not make a lot of money and not sell a lot of books. And it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with, you know, the, the market is shifting, the means of distribution are shifting, something happened in the publishing house that I had no control over, somebody had a feud with somebody, and suddenly nobody can get my books. Like, these things I don't control. So I had to learn how to just love the craft again and remind myself why I started writing in the first place. I did not start writing because I thought, well, I'll become a USA Today bestselling author. Uh, I certainly wanted that to happen, but I also knew that my chances of that happening were pretty slim. And I basically started writing because I had stories to tell and I love to read. And I thought, maybe I can do that too. Um, and I needed to get back to that sort of, that joy in the process of writing. It used to be something I got to do when I had a free moment and it eventually became something I had to do. And I needed to learn how to be happy doing my work. Um, so I remembered this idea of the artist statement. I said, you know, I need like a mission statement for my craft uh, that is completely divorced from any of this business stuff. The business stuff is important. Don't get me wrong. 
you know, I'm not saying that I don't want to make money as a writer. I do. I want to get paid what I'm worth. Um, but I can't guarantee that that will happen. So I need to first find joy in the process and then let everything else fall into place. Um, and so, uh, because I do hear a lot of writers, especially ones that are very focused on the business, they are pretty bitter. I don't want to be a better writer. I want to be a happy writer. What's the point of doing something you love if it makes you unhappy? I guess it's like you're guaranteeing that you're going to hate the thing you loved and nobody wants that. So the artist statement, I wrote mine in a pretty mundane looking need notebook. It's a, th it's a three subject notebook though. I go deluxe. Um, this is my morning pages notebook. I have been writing morning pages for about three or four years. Um, I am almost out of pages in the spiral. I already have a new one waiting in the wings. Look, I have it. It's blank. It's right here. I got another one. It's beautiful blank pages waiting for me to vent my spleen when I'm done with this one. I usually do a page or two every morning. Just while I'm drinking my coffee, I'll write a couple pages. I don't do it every morning, but most. Um, and so this is a great... Um, place just to kind of get ideas down. Sometimes I'll write ideas for stories, but mostly it's just me bitching about this is going on. I got to figure this out. Oh my God, this person annoyed me, whatever. It's just a way to vent. And, um, but in one section of this is my artist statement. Um, and I kind of cobbled together a template um, based on some other artist statements I'd seen online that were mostly for, you know, painters or sculptors or something and I just sort of adjusted it based on what I thought I needed and the purpose of this document is not for you to lay out like career goals it's a way for you to really get in touch with sort of deeper themes and drives that motivate you to write um, and it's about getting very real about why you're doing this and like I said, some of you may be doing this to make money, um, but I'm going to tell you something. If that's what's driving you, you will burn yourself out very quickly. So if you love to write, you need to protect the reasons that you tell stories. And you need to understand the reasons that you tell stories. And what's beautiful about this career or this hobby, if that's what it is for you, is it really invites a lot of self-awareness and a lot of self-exploration um, because everything we're writing comes from inside of us and is informed by our issues and our needs. And the more you understand those things, the better your fiction will be um, and the happier you'll be as a writer because you'll be aware of what you need. So there's a few sections of this statement. You can adjust this any way you need to. If you wanna ask yourself different questions, totally cool it's your it's your artist statement don't show it to anybody uh because it's nobody's business but yours while you write and this is not something where you need to be really self-conscious about what other people are going to think about what you're doing there's my dog my dog doesn't need to know why you're writing either anyway so you're going to um keep it private and you're not going to worry about what anyone thinks about why you write. You're just going to get real with yourself, okay? So my first section was why I write. And I didn't turn this into a long, you know, there's so much bullshit that we talk about, right? I write because la la la. Like whenever this comes up on Twitter, people are like, let me show you how deep I am. Look, the real reason you write might be really deep but it's probably not the reason you tell people right because a lot of us aren't real comfortable admitting in public that we write because we want to feel loved or because we were bullied as kids and it made us like super aware of how little we fit in and we were trying to understand why everybody else fit in and that made us really curious and great observers of human nature or whatever your reasons, um, 
We don't talk about those things really honestly in public. Um, and this is a document where you don't have to show it to anybody. So be real. You might write stories because you think it's a way to get revenge. Uh, because, you know, you were, you know, didn't fit in. And t somebody told you you'd never make anything of yourself. And you're like, I'm going to show you. I'm going to write. I'm going to become a famous author. That's fine if that's your reason. Put it down. Because all of these things, what we're doing is we're building sort of, we're building a, um, a language for you um, that is very distinct to you about where the stories come from. What place are they coming from in you? And where are you trying to go with them? Um, so get it down. Mine is just one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's all like to something, like to entertain or to play or um, to, to think. I don't know. Because writing for me helps me figure out what I think about things. I'm an extroverted thinker. So I usually have to talk out or write out my thoughts in order to really get to the heart of what I'm thinking about something. Um, so, you know, it's important to keep in mind. Um, your second section is my favorite things about writing. And this could be everything from nailing the perfect metaphor to um, building a world that nobody's ever seen before or um, uh, you know, being able to say things in my work through my characters that I would never say in public. To, you know, getting my real thoughts out and being able to hide behind, you know, character or metaphor to do it. You know, things like that. Um, your next section is feelings and values. If you're a new writer, you may not have a body of work to look back on and say, these are the values and themes and feelings that are coming up again and again in my work. You know, when I did this a couple of years ago, I'd already written 10 novels and several short stories. So I could go back and be like, oh, this came up in that story and in that story and in that one and kind of look at the body of work and, and realize that I'd sort of unconsciously been exploring the same ideas over and over again. Um, if that is you and you are a new writer, then maybe what you can do is look at the kinds of books that you're drawn to over and over again. Um what themes in those books really kind of hook you um, and are, feel kind of, you know, crunchy to you that you really like to dig into or you want it, you think you want to dig into in your own work. Um, so just write a list of adjectives, nouns, whatever it is, you know, it could be um, like some of mine or things like balance is a theme that comes up over and over again. Synesthesia, which is the mixing it's playing with sensory details because I am a little bit of a synesthete so when I write you know smells that um have color and things like that it's because when I smell things I see color and that's showing up a lot in my work um it, it may be things like justice uh is a theme that comes up over and over again man versus um corrupt organizations those kinds of things just create a list everything you, that you can think of sorry um and then the next thing you want to write is or that i wrote was what's your favorite genre and i was surprised myself here because i wrote that my favorite genre is no genre i said my favorite genre is magic um if you look at my work everything i have written has had has had magic in it in some form, regardless of what genre it is. My romances are about vampires. My urban fantasies are about all sorts of creatures um, and magic. And I have a novel coming out in February that's a horror novel set in the Appalachian Mountains that's about like mountain magic. And so everything I write is on this kind of spectrum of magic. So that's what I consider my genre. Um, and again, this is just for me. This is not to do with how I market my books. It's about me understanding what I'm doing. I talk about it differently with my readers. Um, and why is that your favorite genre? What are you drawn to in that genre? Write that down. Next, what inspires you? Where, what well are you going to over and over and over again for ideas and symbols and themes? You know, I have a really whole lot 
in my books about death and gallows humor and about um, you know, sort of chthonic um, metaphors and um, I talk, I go a lot to, um, you know, there's a lot of spirit, like religion in my books, even though I'm not a religious person, it's me exploring religion as a non-religious person and my relationship to that. Um, so what, what do you get inspiration from over and over again? Um, look for patterns in your storytelling, um, whether it's types of plots um, this is a new section, by the way, patterns. Um, one of my patterns is women finding their agency through magic. Another one for me is, um, distress of authority and groups. Um, so these things come up over and over again. And I think this is different from the themes and values section, because this could be also like, um, plot devices that you go to over and over again. Um, or plot structures, things like that. The next section is what do I like best about writing? World building, creating characters, um, writing great sentences. Um, and this is, again, this is not where you put showing my work to other people. What do I like best? Being done. Don't put that. Write what you like best about being in the trenches writing the stories. Where do you say, okay, this is kind of cool. Okay, because like I would never ever put plotting on this list. Plotting might be your favorite part. That's important to know because it will drive what kind of stories you tell. It'll drive your process of writing. Um, another section is how do you define a good project? Like a project that you're proud of. For me, I love this answer and I'm going to share this one with you even though I'm not going to read my whole thing to you. One where I challenged myself was authentic and did the best work of which I am capable. And I love that definition because all I, that means all I have to do to be satisfied with the story is challenge myself, be, be honest and do the best work I can do. You know, sometimes you write a book, you do your best and it doesn't hit. You don't control that. Um, all you can do is say, well, I did my best. There's some freedom in that. Um, there's some freedom in that. And that's important to find those moments of freedom in this business. Um, so what you do is you ask yourself all these questions. You explore it. You journal. You write lots of adjectives. You know, if you think of other questions that help you kind of drill down a little bit more, that's great. And then what you do is you take that whole, all those answers and you come up with two, three, four paragraphs that really distill what you're trying to do. What does writing mean to you? What, what kind of stories are you trying to tell and why? You know, when I wrote mine, I started mine with the, with the sentence, when my work is going well, it is. And then I listed, you know, when my work is going well, it's authentic, it's powerful, it's unapologetic, you know, it's, and there's more there, but um, what is that for you? And then go on and talk about, um, these are the kinds of characters I want to write about. These are the kinds of settings I want to write about. This is the kind of genre I want to explore. Um, and what is important for you personally in your stories? You know, what are you trying to learn about yourself through your work? And just come up with a statement that explores those ideas. Um, this is a, a paragraph from my statement that enca encapsulates everything for me. And it is two sentences long. All right. And I'm going to read it to you. My imagination and my stories are my magic. They connect me to the universe and are the manifestation of my power. Words are my magic. That, those two sentences keep me going. Because I know that on those days when I feel like nobody cares about my stories, why am I working so hard at this? Nobody, you know, my sales are down. I got a bad review. You know, 
it's a very isolated way of living. You know, you don't always, I mean, sometimes I go out in public and I meet somebody and they say they've read my books and I am like floored because I really don't have a sense that people are out there reading my books. Um, so it can be really isolating. It can be really defeating. It's really hard sometimes to pull yourself out of that funk of why does this matter? And all I have to do is look at those two sentences. Words are my magic. That is why I'm here because I can tell good stories. That is my contribution. And having this statement to come back to and remind myself why I do this has saved my career more times than I really care to admit. So that's why I'm really encouraging you to try it. Um, if you do this and you hate it, that's fine. It must not work for you. It doesn't have to. Um, some people respond to this kind of exercise and some people don't. If you don't respond to it, that doesn't mean you're not a good writer. It doesn't mean you don't care about your craft. It probably just means that you are not the kind of person who really loves to mine the depths of their psyche. I personally, I am an ENF, I'm an ENFP uh, in Myers-Briggs, which means that me being authentic and really getting down to why why am I doing this why am I here is the whole core of like my existence um so this kind of thing is like the most fun for me if you hate it that's cool try it though you might learn something um also you can google uh lots of other ideas for how to do this uh other questions to sort of meditate on or journal about that help you kind of get down to it and um, if you try it and you learn something about it, about yourself that you didn't expect, be okay with that. You know, I thought when I started writing that I was going to write historical fiction. And um, I've tried to do it since then, since I started writing. And I can't do it. It's hard. Uh, all writing's hard, but like it's like literally hard. And one day maybe I'll do it, but right now I'm not ready to. Um, and I have, you know, you have to kind of go with what you've got. And what I've got right now is I'm really, really good at writing books about magic. And um, knowing that and understanding that that is where my power is right now has helped me make a lot of decisions. You know, my former agent, started telling me that I should avoid all stories with magic in it. And knowing that that was so not who I am is to leave, to leave that behind allowed me to get the courage to end that relationship because I realized that she didn't understand what I was doing, that she was so focused on following the market that it was not in my best interest to continue to work with her as much as I respected her and really, you know, liked her as a friend, I realized it was time to part ways. So this can be more than just like mental masturbation or a way to procrastinate doing your work. It can literally help you make business decisions. It can help you decide which projects you want to work on next. Um, it can help give you the courage to write that book you've been too afraid to write. It could do all those things. It could do nothing, but maybe you should try it anyway. Oh, you just saw a dog tail. Anyway, I hope you find this helpful. Um, this is a great exercise to do right now. We're getting towards the end of the year. 2018 is just around the corner. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'll do another um, video on, you know, kind of my end of year wrap up, how I do that. Every year I do a whole like year in review thing and then I set my goals. I'll talk about how I do all that. Um, and one more thing before I'm done, you know, I... I've had a lot of friends say, you know, why are you making these videos? Um, you know, they aren't selling, you know, you're not like selling your books. You're not trying to sell workshops. Like you're not trying to monetize this. That's dumb. And the thing is like, I, um, I do them because when I teach about writing, it keeps me in love with writing. And, um, I really feel like this is a way that I give back um, I had a lot of great mentors and teachers in my career and, you know, I think it's really important once you have some experience under your belt to sort of put a hand back and help people forward. Um, however, um, if you want to support my writing, 
uh, there's a couple of easy ways to do it. The first is you can buy my books. Uh, I have two books that have recently come out. One is Volatile Bonds, which is the fourth book of my Prosperous War series. This is my first big self-published book. It's gotten a lot of really good reviews. Uh, it's a kind of special because I proved that I can do it on my own with this book. Um, a lot of people have said it's their favorite book in the series. So hmm, maybe check it out. Um, it's an ebook, it's an audiobook, it's in print, obviously. Look at this beautiful cover. Isn't it gorgeous? And then the other one I put out is this print version of The Chosen Ones, which is a Sabina short fiction collection. It's got three Sabina Kane short story uh, novellas and a prequel story for this series, this Kate Prospero series. So you kind of get a sampler of two of my my two big series. This is an ebook in print. Um and it's kind of fun. You get a lot of different kinds of stories in it for not a lot of money. Um, if that's not your thing, if you don't read my genre, if you don't want to get into a series, whatever reason, um, a great way is to join my newsletter. I'll put the link below. If you sign up for my newsletter, uh, you automatically get a free short story collection. It's got three stories in it. They're sort of more on the magical realism you know, um, spectrum moving on towards horror. Each story is kind of a different genre, but they're all kind of on that spectrum. Um, and you get that for free. Um, and all you have to do is sign up for my newsletter and that'll keep you abreast of, you know, any workshops I'm teaching or, uh, any new books I have coming out, any cool stuff. Um, I didn't put a newsletter out in November because my intrepid uh, assistant, Chelsea, uh, got this really sweet full-time gig somewhere, and so she didn't have time to be my assistant anymore. Um, so I am getting ready to put out the newsletter on my own in December. I haven't done my own newsletter in a while. Uh, she made it very easy for me. Um, but there will be one in December. I'm actually doing a really fun, um, like, gifts uh, newsletter like things you can get fans of my books um, that are tied into the themes of my books they aren't my books I'm just like stuff that you would like if you like my books basically whatever I'm still working on it um, but if you sign up for my newsletter there's like like literally that's all you have to do you get a free you get some free stories I put fun stuff in there I put a recipe in every month I put in pictures of my fans pets um, that kind of stuff. And that's basically at jwells.com slash newsletter. I'll put that link below to click on it. Um, and really, thank you for watching my videos. Um, another great way to support them is to share them on social media uh, with any of your writer friends who might find some of these talks interesting. Um, and I think that's it. Um, I hope that the holiday season treats you well. I hope that you're reading good books. And most of all, I hope you're writing good books and enjoying it. Thanks so much.